Hello, welcome to the self learning platform by Dr. Shushma Singh. Today we are going to start unit 15 classical liberalism with topic ideology of classical liberalism views about men, society, economy and state. At the political level, liberalism sought to erect a theory of state based upon the subjective claims of the individual rather than upon subjective reality. The only basis of civil society which early classical liberalism could conceive was contract or an agreement between the individual and the state. The contract theory had three interrelated elements. The state is not created by God but is the creation of man. It is not a natural institution but an artificial institution and the basis of state and political obligation is the consent of the individual. Classical liberalism did not regard the state as a natural necessity arising out of man's needs and social nature with a purpose transcending the subjective wills of the individual but as an artificial institution based upon the egoistic nature of man. The state comes into existence by mutual consent for the sole purpose of preserving and protecting the rights of the individual and the relationship between the state and the individual is a contractual one. When the terms of the contract are violated, individuals not only have the right but also the responsibility to revolt and establish a new government. Through the notion of consent, liberalism tried to safeguard the rights and liberties of the people and check the arbitrariness of the rulers. Consent was also made a precondition of the state because liberalism believed that the authority of the state was a restraint upon individual freedom and it should be checked as per as possible. In spite of being the creation of men, Classical liberalism saw the state in purely negative terms. It was termed as a necessary evil. It was necessary because only if could provide law, order, security of life and property. But it was an evil also because it was an enemy of a human liberty. Since liberalism considered the rights and liberties of the individual as sacred, any increase in the functions of the state was seen as a decrease in the liberty of the individual. Hence, the state was seen as having a negative function to provide security of life and property and live the individual free to pursue his good in his own way. The philosophy of the state as unnecessary evil and the self-regulating economy left a very limited role for the government. The liberal slogan was that government is the best which governs as the least. To illustrate this point further, Adam Smith restricted the functions of the state to protect the society from violence and invasion. 
protect every member of the society from injustice and oppression of the every member and to erect and maintain certain public work and certain public institutions in which the individual may not be interested because it would be unprofitable. Similarly, William Sr. wrote, The essential business of government is to afford defense to protect the community against foreign and domestic violence and fraud. Bentham reduced the task of the government to security and freedom. Another writer, Thomas Palm, said, while society in any state is a blessing, government even in its best state is but a necessary evil. Herbert Spencer advocated the doctrine of survival of the fittest and pleaded that the state should have a minimum role in the socio-economic sphere. As a political theory, liberalism can be traced to the political thought of Thomas Hobbes, but its clear expression was found in the thought of John Locke. Locke declared that no one can be subjected to the political power of another without his own consent. For him, freedom meant freedom from the state. State and government were deemed as restrictive institutions. Locke propounded a theory of natural rights of life, liberty and property, for the protection of which the state comes into being. He conceived rights as prior to state. The basis of the state is a contract, which the ruler or the ruled can get rid of. Government is the result of individual will. Civil society is sovereign and the state is an artificial institution created for certain specific ends like order, security, protection of the rights of li life, liberty and property. State was given a very limited sphere of action, namely establishment of law and order, suppression of violence, protection of rights and property. The American and French revolution of the 18th century were largely influenced by liberal ideology. Like Locke, Thomas Paine also denied that the state has unlimited absolute power and asserted the political liberty of the community and the defense of the individual against the possible tyranny of the monarch. Similarly, Montesquieu endeavored to do for French what Locke had done for England in the 17th century as a liberal his first concern was individual freedom and he endeavored to discover checks on political authority by means of which it might be secured. To this end, he developed a theory of separation of powers which had a far-reaching influence. The 19th century produced a group of writers called philosophical radicals like Bentham, James Mill and J.S. Mill. The doctrine they propounded is known as utilitarianism, which dominated liberal thought for more than half a century. Utilitarianism provided a new theoretical foundation to liberalism. It was based upon the theory of hedonism. It means that all men seek pleasure 
and white pain. Pleasure is the only thing desirable in and for itself. Wealth and position, power, health and even virtue itself is desired merely as a means to the ultimate end of pleasure. What gives pleasure is utility and is desirable and what gives pain does not have utility and is avoided. In his opening paragraph of his introduction to the principles of morals and legislation, Bentham wrote, Nature has placed mankind under the governance of two sovereign masters, pain and pleasure. It is for them alone to point out what we ought to do as well as to determine what we shall do. However, all happiness being impossible, men must seek the greatest happiness in terms of quantity. Similarly, the greatest happiness of all the people being impossible. We must seek the greatest happiness of the greatest number. Bentham applied the principle and methods of utility to the spheres of law, politics and the state. For Bentham, state is an instrument devised by man to satisfy his desires and reflects his will. The sole justification for it is that it provides peace, order, security and helps them to satisfy these desires. It is a means to promote happiness of the individual. Utility in the context of the state is expressed through law. It is law which unites people together and puts them on a road of utility. Bentham considered law as an important instrument of expression of utility and regarded legislation as the only device through which utility could be attained. Hence, he considered the state as a law-making body because it is only through law that the state rewards or punishes so as to increase happiness and decrease pain. The purpose of law is to regulate the motive of self-interest. Mere morality is not sufficient and unless law comes into operation, bad things cannot be out of place. Bentham believed in the command theory of law and regarded it as the command of the sovereign. The sovereign is the source of law. All men are equal in eyes of law and all have equal rights as regards the promotion of happiness. But in spite of the fact that the state is an instrument to promote happiness of the individual, the character of the state according to Bentham, remains negative. Believing that men are moved by their self-interest and everybody is the best judge of his pleasure and pain, Bentham came to the, the conclusion that the main function of the state was to remove all the institutional restrictions on the free action of the individual. The purpose of the state is not to foster and promote, but only to restrain them from indulging in activities which affect the general happiness by punishing them. To increase the national wealth means of subsistence and enjoyment, the general rule is that to achieve the greatest happiness of the greatest number. Nothing should be done or attempted by the government. Bentham reduced the function of the state only 
to security and freedom in other words to promote the happiness of the individual the state is a negative institution simultaneously along with conceiving the state as an instrument of democratic state promoting security and freedom bentham foresaw the need and aspirations of the modern democratic state he preferred the democratic form of government because it a representative democracy was more likely to secure the greatest happiness of the greatest number by adopting constitutional devices like suffrage annual parliaments vote by ballot election of prime minister by the parliament and appointment of civil servants through competitive exams also he favored the unicameral legislature vote by secret ballot recall of public officials civil and criminal code and prison reforms these contribution went a long way in the development of the liberal perspective of the state here we want to wind up today's lecture thank you so much for your attention